So when talking about the tech level of the Imperium, it can be an extremely hot topic. In this video, I'm going to be going over a couple of different ways of measuring this, namely the Kardashev scale for the scientific answer, which is a little outdated, I will admit, but it's still fun to think about. We also have this thing, which I think is called the Solo Residual, or Salo, Salau. I have no idea why it has such a dumb name, but whatever. This method basically states that any and all changes in output that cannot be explained by the capital stock or changes in the number of workers must be due to technological progress. I'll be honest, this is gonna suck to work with, as it's extremely polarizing not just the environments people work in, but where people sleep and eat. Then, at the very end, I'll give my opinion as to how advanced they are at once we compare it to the other two scales. So before we actually get started, I think it's important to go over what we can actually qualify as technology within the Imperium. Almost anything that uses a Psyker or the Warp as their primary power source will not be counted. I know that limits a lot of the appeal of 40k, but it's important to talk solely about tech and manufacturing or fabrication of goods. So the previously mentioned Kardashev scale, while horribly outdated, is still one of my favorite measurements or scales of a civilization. Nikolai Kardashev was a Soviet astrophysicist who posited that as a civilization grows, their usage and quote-unquote consumption of power increases inversely to that of the population's expansion. For example, modern energy consumption has us sitting at a 0.72 on the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale defines a Type 1 civilization as consuming roughly 44 quadrillion watts of power per year. Some other measurements that might help, or might just confuse you more, our planet receives a total of 2 times 10 to the 17th power watts per year, which is almost exactly 4 times what our species consumes in power every single year. The main characteristic of a Type 1 civilization is using as much energy as what would normally strike your planet from your given star. Keep in mind, there's a very big distinction between everything the star puts out and everything that your planet absorbs from your star. 2 times 10 to the 17th power sounds like a lot, but that is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what the sun puts out every single year. We are one pixel compared to the sun. A type 2 civilization, however, would consume as much energy as our sun puts out entirely within a year. Freeman Dyson, the father of the Dyson Sphere and the Dyson Swarm, present us with a couple of possibilities for reaching this. One is extremely complex and not at all worth the investment unless you are a really isolationist empire. The other is simple and we humans will begin harvesting sun power in a similar way to how Dyson envisioned it. The Dyson Sphere, as Dyson originally portrayed to the world, was that of a swarm of solar collectors that, from the outside, looked like the entire star was engulfed in a sphere. Alternatively, you have the super expensive task of just building a physical shell around it, similar to how a lot of science fiction portrays a big shell made of massive plates welded to a honeycomb superstructure. I don't like the shell, it's impractical for real world, but it's just so cool. A Type 3 civilization is defined by having the equivalent of Dyson Swarms or Dyson Spheres around every single star in the galaxy, or having an energy consumption roughly equal to that. Essentially, it's exponential growth. A 1 is exponentially smaller than a 2, and so on and so forth. Type 4 and Type 5 Kardashev civilizations are not relevant to the tech conversation, um, they do partially pertain to the Warp and maybe the Necrons, since Type 4 uses universal scales of energy or capable of manipulating space-time or even creating galaxies. Type 5 are the masters of the universe, so to speak, like actual gods. I think Necrons fit somewhere between 3 and 4, since they did at one point master tech, or as close to it as it gets. Back to the topic of the Imperium, we get to talk about Dyson Spheres again because of this little place called Lucius the Hollow Forge. Technically, it belongs to the Mechanicus, but they are an Adepta now, so they're part of the Imperium. Lucius is essentially one of the highest output Forge worlds, and given its size, I completely understand why. Technically, it isn't a full sun, but it's at a minimum two-thirds of the way there since the scale is exponential or logarithmic. 
Lucius is home of the Collegia Astorum of the Collegia Titanica and is a physical shell around the star. Not a swarm, but a physical shell built around an artificial sun. This artificial sun fuels the forge and allows them to make some of the best alloys within the Imperium. Some of the elements found there are only found within Lucius, as they require the immense pressure of a ball of fusing elements like a star. Granted, the Imperium doesn't have the means to repair it for the Kardashev scale part. I will be counting it because they do consume a solid portion of that energy, and constructing one is the hallmark of a Type 2 civilization, so them maintaining it is kinda halfway there. Outside of Lucius the Hollow Forge, we know that there are roughly a million worlds in the Imperium. Some estimates say 3 million, but honestly, at that scale, the numbers really stop to matter. Let's call it 2 million just to be fair. Now, it has to be said that a solid portion of the Imperium lives in abject poverty. They have agri-worlds that are actually operating on a black powder level of technology. It is a regular thing for the Imperium to have worlds that operate on a day-to-day -day basis well below our current tech level. But hey, <laughs> they still pay their tithe. Or at least a tithe. Out of the 2 million worlds, let's be generous and say that 5% of the worlds are black powder. Another 10% are below our consumption level, but above black powder, and below the second or third industrial revolution. 10% would be at our consumption level, and the other 75% are above to well above. That means that at a minimum, we have 1.5 million worlds operating at a Kardashev 0.72 and above, meaning that for sure, the Imperium of Man, strictly on an energy consumption basis, is a K2 civilization comfortably. That is not factoring in orbital or mining infrastructure, and not factoring in any of the other megastructures. I'd wager that Holy Mars and any other Forge world that has at least one orbital ring would be a Type 1.2 minimum. Mars itself has to be approaching 1.4 or 1.5 on the Kardashev scale. Major hive worlds like Necromunda would also be up there in the 1.2 to 1.4 range for energy consumption. Reminder that this scale is logarithmic or exponential. Now, not to put holes in everything I just said, the Kardashev scale, even when it was proposed and published, received a lot of criticism and it is justly deserved. The Kardashev scale operates on a series of assumptions, namely that any species or empire of any kind would infinitely grow. This doesn't factor in isolationist or other less expansionist empires. In 40k especially, the scale of a solar system just isn't realized outside of a few instances. The Advex Moors campaign, the Emperor's Crusade of the Soul System are just two great examples. Advex Moors described essentially every rock as a weapons platform, and the Sol system had empires within the Jovian and Galilean moons, which are Jupiter and Saturn respectively. All in all, the Kardashev scale does have its uses, but it is no meaning of the word a definitive answer. As a standalone measurement, the Kardashev scale doesn't tell you enough to make any kind of a judgment. So before we move on, humanity in the 42nd millennium or 43rd or whatever we're at is roughly a type 2.2 to 2.5 civilization. I think now is the perfect time to bring up the term techno-barbarians or techno-scavengers. Before we get into measurements, I think we have to define technology again, or technological progress. As this commenter said in his comment, the Imperium doesn't really have technology or make progress in the traditional sense. They simply work with what they have and don't even bother reverse engineering anything. It works because it works. The LAS gun works because it works, and the Omnissaya and the Machine Spirit will it to work, as opposed to understanding the mechanism for each component. In the eyes of the Mechanicus and the wider Imperium, all technology can and has existed. We just have to rediscover it. It is more reliable to take the technology that our super advanced ancestor used, as opposed to investing the time and resources on research and development. Remember that this is grimdark, not sci-fi. The Imperium has been at war for over 10,000 years. They have been operating at a wartime economy for so long that any and all resources can and must go towards fighting the enemies of mankind. Each scientist or engineer is someone who could be in a factory producing tanks that we know work 
or on the front line holding a lasgun fighting god knows whatever Xenos abomination. Dogma and religious fervor are the base fundamentals for the Ecclesiarchy and the Mechanicus as a whole. Take Belisarius Call for example. He actually tries to figure out the mechanism behind technology as opposed to just praying that it works. Thankfully, Papa Blueberry has allowed for Call to start inventing again, and the Imperium is painstakingly slowly making progress forward. Compare this to the Tau, where they have autoloaders for their ships and most weapon system. This frees up manpower that can be used elsewhere. When we look at how the Imperium does things, we have to remember scale. The Imperium is operating at such a scale that a billion people can die, and so long as it isn't on an important sector or on an extremely important planet, nobody, or almost nobody, would notice. Bringing it back to the autoloaders of the Tau, the Tau can work with autoloaders since they can spend the 30 to 40% extra material to make sure the individual is most effective. In the Imperium, the material that could be used for an autoloader is more important than the people loading the shells. The Imperium births and loses quadrillions of human lives on an hourly or daily basis depending on the author and the faction. That means that the Imperium has a nearly renewable energy source to throw at any problem. Manpower is cheap and everywhere within the galaxy. Finding high quality alloys and spending the time and energy to forge them into new things or replace old things just isn't feasible. In the eyes of the wider Imperium, the only resource that they are swimming in is manpower, and every goddamn person is going to fit somewhere in the war machine. Whether you suffer some horrible accident in some forge or some foundry, or maybe you get sent to the Guard or Penal Legion and become the gum in some Xenos' tank treads. Also, keep in mind that a lot of the time just dying is serving the Imperium in one way or another. Your body will be ground down and compacted into corpse starch. Then you will be eaten, and whoever eats you will perpetuate the cycle. Humanity, for all intents and purposes, is the only renewable resource in the galaxy. The Tyranids are onto something. Because the Imperium operates on this brutal wartime economy, they only produce what they know works, and what our ancestors made. Bringing it way back to the beginning of the video, to one of the definitions of technology, this one more accurately frames the Imperium's technological status. Any and all increases in production without extra workers or change in capital stock is attributed to technology. By this definition, we know that the Imperium is even less advanced than the Tau, we know for a fact that servitors are still somewhat human, human-ish, human-adjacent. A solid portion of the quote-unquote tech within the Imperium is just people, or at least half people. I still don't think this is a perfect example, but it is a lot better than just measuring energy consumption. By using this variable between laborers and the quality of capital, we can gauge that the Imperium is arguably the second least advanced major faction in the galaxy, followed only by the Tyranids because, well, all they have is manpower or laborers. Remember that having technology doesn't count for anything if it doesn't improve output, can't be reproduced, or is just misused outright. It also has to be said that I have no idea how to actually use the solo residual. I am just using its definition for this. Uh, if I have to give it a number, I'm, I don't know, four? Now that we're past the solo residual, or solo, or whatever, however you want to say it, and we're past the Kardashev scale, now we get to speculate. We know that during the Great Crusade, humanity, upon subsuming the Solemnar gene cults, had almost mastered genetic modification. This can't be overstated. Humanity was able to manipulate their own genomes to the point where they could mass produce super soldiers. And also, people with a third eye that see into the warp. But that's not explicitly said to be genetic modification, but it also isn't too far of a stretch to think that the navigator gene was purposely placed there. I want to circle back to Call here, since he had to absorb an ungodly number of people and has lost a large portion of his memory in an attempt to improve upon the work of the Emperor. We can actually deduce a couple of things from this, two of which stand out to me. Either the early Imperium of Man damn near mastered genetic manipulation, or at the very least, what we understood at the time as the limits of genetic engineering. Or, we can believe that the early genetic work of the Imperium was so shoddy that it took Call 10,000 years to find a way to fix it or improve it. 
I like that theory, but I also want to mention the last and most likely theory, and that is that technology is lost too fast within the Imperium because there is no solid way to keep information around. There is no desire in understanding how things work, only how to produce more as fast as possible with as little material waste as possible. Within a few generations, vast swaths of knowledge of the inner workings and mechanics of goods and materials are replaced with knowledge on increasing production at the cost of the knowledge or insight into the inner workings. Soon enough, we have uncounted masses producing the tanks that nobody understands anymore, but we know for sure they do work. We can look at the current situation of Call as an analog for humanity scraping back together the remnants of humanity. Every so often, he has to dump large portions of his memory because he needs to learn new stuff. Along the way, he has lost information which more than likely could have saved a billion or three lives, maybe helped the Imperium kill an extra billion or so enemies. Either way, it's a really good metaphor for the way humanity has to prioritize information for survival. Humans are the apex survivalists. It won't be pretty, and it sure will have consequences, but compared to extinction, it's no question. Just like a lizard willing to lose its tail so it can escape, we are willing to lose vast portions of knowledge if that means we can live another day. It also has to be said that there are certain places within the Imperium that do actually try and invent new things or try and advance the knowledge of humanity, but that isn't the entirety of the species. That isn't the driving motive force behind the Imperium quite like Faith is. Or just, uh, I don't know, Faith probably is the word. I think blind devotion is going to be a better term, but uh, I think Faith works as well. Now, onto the Psychers and the Warp. I don't really know how to fit them into a video about technology, so I can't really call it technology. But it also is because they were created by the old ones, and technically that's technology because they created us to do things, and we do things, which is go to war. Also, the only thing we really ever seem to innovate is the use of warp powers, which, I mean, congrats I guess, but you need technology. Did everyone forget that the Age of Strife was caused because of Psykers? The Emperor's Webway project was destroyed because of Psykers? But no, we're still gonna trust him. I don't know, I feel like I lost the point five or ten minutes ago. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. I can safely say that the Imperium is the third least technologically advanced species in the 40k galaxy. Just, well, Tyranids are technically the least efficient because they just use bio, or like biomass. So by the solo residual or solo, however you want to say it, they are the least advanced followed by the Amish Eldari, I forget what they're called, I want to say Exodites, but I don't think it's that, and then you have the Imperium at third. Yeah, thank you for watching.